Concerned New Yorkers hunkered down in a packed auditorium at the new school for a town hall meeting about the plans the MTA and DOT have in place once the L train shuts down next April. We feel that the plans were developed just with the commuters in mind and we feel they should be better balanced with commuters. I'm a commuter, um, I have a bike, but we feel they should be better balanced with the needs of the residents as well as the commuters and the businesses. And that's what we're asking for. We want to be part of the solution, um, but not excluded because commuters are going to be impacted twice a day as they're going back and forth to work. We're going to be impacted 24-7. Concerns seem to be pitting commuters and residents along the L line on 14th Street at odds with one another. The commuters want accessibility to Manhattan, while residents fear overcrowding on the streets. Now, 14th Street area residents made sure their voices were heard at the town hall. If you're going to put bikeways, why restrict it to two streets? Go from 23rd Street down to Canal Street and put a bikeway on every street. Streets. Doesn't make any sense to me. Debbie, you still have, you have not yeah. answered the. I'm sorry, sorry, she has not answered the. Where will you enforce the HOV3 on the Manhattan side, and where will those cars go? Oh, well, right, and commuters are, weren't shy either. At midnight on a Friday or Saturday, it is as crowded as rush hour. Yep. Please limit the applause. Thank you. What are the alternatives? for 24-7 service from Manhattan to Brooklyn, a dynamic community, a center of culture, and an industrial center too. We have people working overnight shifts, we have people going to concerts. The L does not exist from commuting hours only. What are the plans to address real 24-7 replacement service? Clearly, the Department of Transportation and the MTA will have their hands full for this monumental task. For perspective, the L train, if looked at by itself, would be the 10th largest train system in North America. It's slightly smaller than San Francisco's entire BART system. That's something officials are hoping isn't lost on the people the shutdown is affecting. At the end of the day, this is a huge challenge. I mean, we've never underestimated that challenge, and we understand that people are understandably concerned about it. So uh, we've really pushed the consultation to the max. Uh, we've held, held a lot of uh, town, um, well, not town halls, but the show and tells already. Uh, we've spoken to community boards. Uh, so to me, this is the logical progression of that. It's still not set in stone. The plan is far advanced, uh, but we still want to hear what people's concerns are. So let's take a look at the plans and the work that's begun so far. Now, just behind me here is the Canarsie Tunnel that connects Brooklyn to Manhattan and vice versa. And of course, that is what the L train runs through. Now, Superstorm Sandy came in and flooded the tunnel with salt water. That salt water damaged the entire infrastructure in the tunnel. So crews have to come in and replace all of that. That is expected to take 15 months and they would need to shut down the tunnels. But work has already begun at the stations closest to the East River, the First Avenue stop as well as Bedford Avenue. You might be able to hear that work going on just above me here. That includes adding staircases as well as elevators. You can see they will be adding staircases here and also across the platform. That is the easy lift. The hard part will be getting the hundreds of thousands of commuters who use the L train from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Now, so far, they are hoping that the reopened Myrtle Viaduct will help carry some of that burden as well as the JMZ lines. The MTA also says they will have added train cars on the C line as well as G, but these, of course, are all preliminary plans so far. The big sticking points are the HOV lanes over the Williamsburg Bridge and how it will be enforced and the proposed busway and bikeways. The agencies are planning for either a 13th Street two-way bike lane or two one-way bike lanes on 12th and 13th Street. Residents along the route are worried about the loss of curb access and perceived dangers of an influx of cyclists. Why can't the bike lanes uh, go back to, I think it was an original idea, of part of 14th Street, instead of expanding the sidewalks, which are actually quite large on 14th Street, having that two-way bike traffic on that main bi-directional. Uh, I'm we, concerned about children yeah. spilling into the street, well, here's, which is here's, what actually here's, happens. Here's the good news. We have, we have built please, protected please bike lanes. Applause. We've built protected bike lanes all over the city. And on streets where we install bike lanes, we actually see crashes and conflicts and injuries go down. Because bikes actually, bike lanes actually Please calm the, the traffic. Applause. Thank you. As for the proposed bus lanes, that's a question that's still yet to be answered. Busways will be coming to 14th Street, but its hours and supported bus lines have yet to be determined. It's a huge challenge in New York City. Obviously, 14th Street, the street itself is extraordinarily busy. The sidewalks are packed. We're now trying to add to the mix the 
you know, over 50,000 subway riders that ride the L train on the Manhattan side, making sure we can do that in a way that keeps those people moving, that keeps pedestrians on the streets safe, and does ensure that, admittedly, the tens of thousands of residents who live in the big buildings on the street, all the businesses, that we're doing what we can to minimize the disruption to their lives. Everyone's going to have to have a little shared sacrifice here. It's, it's, it's going to be disruptive. Our goal is to try and find the best balance we can. Residents also say they're concerned that changes like the bikeways will become permanent. Bikeways will, in some shape or form, be part of the plan. The DOT says when the shutdown is wrapping up, it will revisit the bike lane effectiveness, talk with the community, and decide whether to keep them. What assurances do we have from you and the city that these will be removed at the end of the period, because this is this is billed as a mitigation, not not as a permanent change or social engineering. I think we're hoping that they're going to work well, but we'll, so you know, we will. Temporary. They may not be temporary. Well, again, I think that's. I'm, I'm hoping that will be a decision that we will have discussions like this about and see how people feel about it.